from that, I've been fairly okay. It's been a bit of a bummer these last couple of days, I'm not going to lie. Um, mostly because of what happened with bloody England. I'm still not over that. I'm really not. I have little moments where it kind of makes me shudder and I get really angry. And I'm thinking about it just now. Absolutely makes me furious. And I still can't get over it. I swear to God, I cannot. It's like, I think back to the game and I think to what France basically displayed. And I think to how we were set up. And I think about just all the missed opportunities out there, man. We could have legitimately won that game so easily. This is not the most frightening or scary France side I've ever seen or come across in all my years watching football. No way in any way, shape or form. We could have done it. We could have made it happen. But of course, our players, when we needed them the most, they ended up bottling it. Our manager and our coach is very reactive and not very progressive and doesn't take initiative and waits until the very last moment until he makes a substitution in order to try and change the game and maybe influence the flipping outcome of it. And just it turned into absolute horror show. It really, really did. And you can't go much further than Harry Kane, really. I know we can get into the minutia of the substitutions and maybe the team selections and the timing of the subs and maybe the way we set up and whatnot. But for me personally, considering that we came back into that game with relative ease, I don't feel like France ever had a chokehold on the game. I don't feel like they asserted any kind of control. If anything, I felt like maybe just before, just before they scored a goal, they did kind of have a period of maybe seven minutes or so, maybe eight, where they took control of the game by the scrap of the neck. Maybe I could say that. But for the majority of the time, even when we went a goal behind from that fab fabulous Chuamani flipping shot from like, what, 25, outside, 25 yards outside the box, which kind of reminded me a little bit of Xabi Alonso. And he has that ability to just shoot really far from outside of the area and get the ball to go into the bottom corner. And that was obviously um, well executed from him. But apart from that, I can't really think of anything that happened in a game that would constitute for us to be in a position where we're losing. I generally do think we did enough to win that game. But clearly, when the chances presented themselves, our players didn't take them. And maybe you could argue we didn't you know, create enough goal-scoring opportunities. That I could definitely give you for sure. But I think overall, Harry Kane really let us down, man. He really let us down because I don't think if we have like a really elite level goalkeeper, like a world, world-class goalkeeper, well, does he let that too many goal go in? probably not but then when you see it on the replay and you see how quickly or maybe with a little bit of delay um what's his face uh what's his name jude bellingham came to close andrew Mane. maybe that obstructed pickford's view and by the time the ball went through uh bellingham's feet or leg sorry it was too late and he had to kind of adjust his feet and get to the other corner and those shots the reason why they're so powerful and so well done is usually you're trying to aim for the furthest corner that's what you're trying to aim for and you're not trying to have it low or high you just no you're not trying to have it high you want to hit as low as possible as fast as possible and hope that the trajectory of the ball can get to the corner before the goalkeeper dives to his right so maybe he wasn't at fault but that penalty man especially the second penalty was probably more crucial in our ability to get back into the game than the first one. I think we could have still scored to make it level if Harry Kane missed the first penalty. But that second penalty for sure deflated us. And it was such a crucial time for us all together that I feel like there's no other better place to start analysing the game than that. And for me, it's a current clarification that in general, especially if you're going to be an elite level football player nowadays, you kind of have to test yourself on the highest possible platform you cannot just get away with being a quasi flat track bully in the english premier league and then expecting when it comes to the crunch moments for your national team who a lot of people expect a lot from which is maybe you know maybe the demands and expectations on the england side are a little bit unfair considering the fact that we haven't won in defense six pluck in 66 but still you would expect more man i expect more i really do if this guy's meant to be the world-class player that all the pundits in england flipping jack off you got gary neville beforehand will be before we sign ronaldo saying he would rather take harry kane and all this sort of nonsense but he's clearly proven even with spurs when they need him most at that crunch period the knockout stages when you need your big strikers to play and to stand up and be counted for he came wanting 
and that was the most crucial penalty but forget the first one the first one is what it is to get us in the game but that second one with the whole entire country's responsibility and weight on your shoulders he knows where full well that there are hundreds and thousands of people in pubs all over the uk holding their beers with bated breath to see what he does when he rolls up to that penalty and he ends up skying it I think it's one thing if he gets on target and the goalkeeper saves it, but he ends up skying it over the bar. And some say that bar is still, that flipping ball is still traveling right now. It's still traveling. It's still going. This ball, it probably arrived to England before the flipping team did. That's how quickly and how fast that ball flipping went out of the stadium. It was absolutely shocking. One of the worst penalties I've ever seen in that kind of level. Because usually if someone's nervous, they have that meek penalty, that kind of, you know, they don't really go in either corner. It's sort of like a perfect goalkeeper's height. But this was hit with classic aggression and it went out of the stadium, flying, flying, flying and probably ended up hitting a flipping Starlink satellite or some nonsense like that. But it was absolutely horrendous. And I saw that for myself and I was like, you know what? This is the reason why Harry Kane should have always moved to a bigger club when he was at Spurs. He shouldn't have stayed at Spurs. That's the whole point. You can't be a player of his ilk and his quality and stay at a club like Spurs where you're not competing for any trophies, no league titles anytime soon and then expect when you get on the big stage for your country to suddenly turn up. It's not going to happen. And quite clearly, he proved it. Quite clearly, he proved it. And the really sad thing for him is that he's 29 years old. So the time for him to go to a big club and get that big money move and that big reputational, you know, um, trophy hunting type of move has been and gone. Where is he most likely going to go? He's definitely not going to go abroad. I don't think so. Not at this stage of his career. And you know how English players are with going abroad. They have a little bit of a fear of doing it. He's got to stay domestic. And I just don't see it ending up well for him, especially considering how competitive the flipping league is. It's just not going to end well. And I, and I think in general, people will say, I think someone said here, oh, Danny Levy don't want to sell him. Yeah, he don't want to sell him, but he has not made any real push to leave the club either. I don't think he's that ambitious. Apart from that Gary Neville interview where he was basically flirting with other clubs, he did app absolutely nothing so far to push and to get himself in a position where he wants to play for a big club we've seen what the full extent of trying to get yourself out of a club is Ronaldo just did it recently we've seen various various um you know variations of trying to get out of a club whether it's refusing to go to training and all this other stuff like it happens quite honestly it happens all the time all the bloody time and he clearly hasn't done it and I don't know man it's just it's just so annoying because I felt like the opportunity was there to win that game. I don't think France were that great. Obviously, the Giroud goal was a bit of a body blow, especially with it being an own goal from flipping Harry Maguire. He's absolutely terrible, isn't he? Tell you what about that one. He hasn't really done his reputation any favours, especially with that being such a high-profile game. I felt against Pry, he was quite solid but this game with the spamming of the long balls crosses the crossfield balls i weren't really doing much and him essentially scoring an own goal with Giroud, um missing him i don't think he was anywhere close um near where the shot from too many which probably shouldn't have been anyway but in general he always seemed to be a step slower than anybody else and i didn't never really like that left hand side anyway maybe because i've got a gender against luke shaw and harry harry Maguire. but that left hand side of defense for us was absolutely shocking um Shaw needed so much encouragement to go forward and then when he did go forward that's the thing that's so annoying about Luke Shaw when he actually did end up attacking against France he actually ended up creating a couple of good chances I think he had a decent shot or cross or something I forgot what occasion he had but he did do some decent stuff when he got in that position but as per usual he loves to cross the ball in the field and doesn't do anything much apart from that but forget him forget Harry Kane forget Luke Shaw forget Jordan Pickford forget Jordan Henderson who I thought was woeful I thought Jude Bellingham, did, Jude Bellingham didn't do that great either um you know, I thought possibly our best player was definitely Saka. Bukayo Saka was awesome. I don't know why he gets subbed off all the time. He was the one that was absolutely tormenting, um, you know, Hernandez to the point where he was so flustered that he would have pushed Mount in the back like he did in the box. Why does Saka keep getting flipping subbed off first? I don't understand it. It's so bloody annoying. And he was legitimately one of the people that was causing us all the problems. Maybe bringing him in field would have helped. Maybe having him play instead of where Foden was playing in that position or something to jig it around. And then bringing on Grealish in extra time added on with what? Like eight minutes or something added. Are you insane? Grealish would have had so much joy in a game like that where legitimately the, I think the referee kind of lost control of the game a little bit. And they were, you know, flying in with the challenges and whatnot bringing on a Grealish to carry the ball and basically invite challenges would have been the perfect remedy to kind of allow us to have an outlet to attack 
But again, forget all that. Gareth Southgate for sure should be get fired. I'm not sure what's happened to him so far. I've not heard anything in the wire that people are saying that he's going to get fired. He should leave off the back of that. He definitely shouldn't bloody stay at the club. So um, um, managing a national team. But again, Harry flipping Kane. They talk about him in this country like he's the Messiah, as if he's flipping Alan Shearer reincarnated. Well, I tell you what, Alan Shearer would have definitely not missed that chance. He would have missed it. I don't care. He would have never, ever, 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 ever missed it. I do not give a crap. So that's why I'm bloody annoyed and bloody fed up and I just can't do it anymore, man. I honestly can't. It's so frustrating watching this country play football. I'm really over it. I swear to God, I'm over it. I really, really am. It's so, so annoying. It was a, a golden opportunity to do something right there in front of us and we ended up squandering it so flipping stupidly because I feel like if we would have drew 2-2, we could have definitely won that game in real time. 100%, 100% sure we could have won that game within 90 minutes. Uh, you know, maybe you would have forced flipping, what's his face? Um, Gareth Southgate to have made that good substitution a bit sooner. 